Last week, my company Sonora Cinematic released two very cool sample packs for Audio Modern Soundbox, and this was definitely a new thing for us, as our core audience was built, making instruments for contact in partnership with Native Instruments. Our contact products aren't going anywhere, we're working on some really cool stuff right now, as a matter of fact, but I've really enjoyed the experience of working in Soundbox, so I thought our community could use a full guide to this relatively new platform. I'm going to divide this into three parts. First, we're going to go through everything you need to know to use the platform and any third-party instrument, including ours. Second, we're going to have a look under the hood in case you want to get your hands dirty building your own instruments. And finally, I'm going to give you some of my thoughts on Soundbox, on how I see its future role in the crowded market of samplers, and in particular in Sonora Cinematics catalog. Feel free to use the video chapters below to skip around, let's get started and and by the way, what I'm about to show you works pretty much in the exact same way on the iPad version of Soundbox. First thing first, you can download Soundbox from the Audio Moderns website or from the Apple Store if you're on the iPad. Uh, it's completely free, but what I would call the sampling features of the plugins are locked unless you buy an Audio Modern sample pack. This basically means that Soundbox can be absolutely used to play third-party instruments, like our post-rock guitars, for example, but you can't build your own or import your own samples. If you come from contact, this is pretty much the equivalent of using contact players. So let me just repeat this for clarity. You can use the free version to play third-party instruments, including ours, but only Audio Models instruments unlock the possibility of using your own sample. I've already covered how to install a third-party library in the 18 seconds long video I'll add in the description. It's very fast and easy to do. Once you've installed them, your packs appear in this list. Every preset has up to three tags that work in conjunction with the filters that populate the presets page, and these will allow you to filter your entire presets list by categories. Each preset in Soundbox can have up to four layers, and MP works by default with no setup needed. In the effects tab you have access to up to four effects per layer and by the way you also have up to four effects in the master bus. The selection of effects is pretty comprehensive. The reverse developed by Synaptic sound great. Uh, the other effects are probably a little less exciting but they do the job. I'm sure Audio Modern will keep adding to the list and improving the DSP on those. In the modulation tab we get access to four different modulators which are basically LFOs each one of them has six shapes and one of these is a step sequencer. Other available modulators that are not in the modulation tab are the mod wheel, aftertouch and MP slide which are all available right clicking on a parameter. Mod wheel can be inverted while aftertouch and slide have a built-in intensity control. Let's move on and to the ARP section. This is one of my favorite features as having four arpeggiators that can work independently on the layers is very cool. If you follow my work with Arturia plugins, you know that I love this kind of thing. Again, this is all pretty intuitive. You can turn the pattern on and draw whatever you like in it. And by the way, it would be really nice to have some factory presets for the arpeggiator. There seem to be none at all, unless I made a mistake while installing Soundbox, I'm not sure. In any case, it works pretty well, and I think the controls are very familiar if you've used any type of sequencer before. Last thing we need to have a look at is the vector. The vector is a simple dynamic crossfade between the four layers. The movement switch allows you to automate this movement and you can also sync it to tempo, which is fun, and you can pick a bunch of different movement shapes. This works very well. The only thing that bugs me is the fact that there isn't a way to assign a MIDI channel to control the movement over the X and Y axis like we do in our ARIA engine for contact. Or at least I couldn't find one. Please let me know in the comments if you know how to do that. This means you are stuck using the movement switch or you can obviously draw automations for this in your digital audio workstation, which is fine, I suppose. Now let's talk about the sampling features, which you'll be interested in if you want to build your own instruments, import your own samples, or if you simply want to change the sample structure of a factory or a third-party preset. The first thing to understand is that each layer loads a group, which is a sample map that has the name that you see here, American Clean in this example. 
By clicking on the spanner icon, you access all the groups available in your library. So if you purchase one of our packs and have the unlocked version of Sandbox, you get several groups that you can mix and match to create your own presets. Once you pick one, you can see all the key map and you can modify it. So for example, you can change sample starting point, add, remove or modify any existing loops, reverse the sample and so on. You can also create a brand new group by clicking on the three dots here and selecting create new source. At this point you can drag and drop samples. Unfortunately there's currently no way to automate to any extent this process. There's no way to read file name tokens from the samples or no pitch recognition, nothing like that. It's a very manual process but you can have different velocity layers by stacking zones and you can add the round robins by adding up to eight round robin layers. A little fun thing I very randomly recently discovered is that when you create a group you can click on the dice to generate a random group name and some of them are really funny. Now to finish this off some considerations on Sandbox as a platform. First of all, comparing Sandbox with Contact or Falcon is pointless, not only because Sandbox is a much newer product that lacks the years of development, the legacy and the feedback loops of these much older products, but also, and most importantly I think, because Sandbox has a much different goal, which is to provide an easy to use, simple sampling platform for musicians to use, and it does that very well. As a developer used to contact, of course I miss the possibility of creating comprehensive, complex engines through custom scripts, I miss the API, the possibility of automating the mapping workflow, but all that comes at the price of much, much higher development costs and a higher barrier to entry. The point with Sandbox is that, provided that we have nice samples, and I think that at Sonora Cinematic we're pretty good at that, we can host them in a straightforward engine which is very much plug and play and that we can share with our customers. Another thing is that Native Instruments, as much as I love working with them, has very steep licensing costs that they charge us developers, which result in higher prices for the end users, which here we don't have at all. On the other end, Soundbox is clearly limited. There isn't really a way to make anything that is a multi-mix setup here, unless you use the four layers for that, but then it would be pretty limited. Or something like our library, Emma Legado, would be simply impossible to achieve here and uh, there isn't a way to custom code a true legato of script. There are also a few other limitations with Soundbox that I'm very sure are exclusively the sign of a product that needs to be developed further and will become part of the feature set with time. A better curated effects section, better modulators, I really miss envelopes and more in general unipolar modulators for example, or the fact that it's currently impossible to define modulation intensity and a starting point for the module can be a bit annoying. There also currently isn't a way to tempo sync and stretch samples, but I know all this stuff will come eventually. And it's awesome to have built-in MP support, which I think will be more and more popular and in demand. I'm an avid user of my uh, Expressive E Os Osmos myself. The support for iPad is also pretty cool and it should open a new market for us, one I'm really keen on exploring and I hope we'll be able to offer really cool instruments to these new users and to our existing customer base. If these libraries are successful, and so far it looks like they're doing pretty well, my hope is that we can develop a catalog for Sandbox in parallel to our catalog for Contact to serve different needs of our customers. I've been producing a lot of music with our Sandbox instruments, we have a couple more in the works, and I found it very stable and inspiring. Let's see what the future holds. I hope this was useful, I'd like to thank the Audio Modern team who helped us a lot answering all our questions and thank you all very much for supporting my work and Sonora Cinematic's work. One small announcement, we're creating a very cool free instrument at Sonora Cinematic, you can learn more watching this video and if you want to check out Post Rock Guitars Volume 1 and 2 for Sandbox, check this other one instead. And thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.